congratulations to you um, for hitting Hall of Fame. We're just, we're really, really proud of you and just really see where you're going with this thing. And in terms of on the annuity side, it's just, it's such a different deal. And I love how earlier you and I had a conversation, Steve, and you know, you said to me, I really just want to kind of show that this could be just as simple as like the life side of things, you know, because you're like, that's essentially what I do, right? Um, It's just kind of a different order of operation. So guys, this is a really exciting call for me to host and to have Steve on with us. So like, I have my pen and paper ready, like I'm, I'm ready to go and ready to let Steve rip. Um, But Steve, before we hop into the nitty gritty, if you don't mind, give us a little bit of background about yourself, kind of how you got into the industry and kind of what led you over to FFL. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll start off with a simple one first. Uh, I was born in Florida, so for any of folks that are Gator fans, I was born pretty much on the campus, so I don't have a choice as far as colleges. Um, <laughs> so if there's any Florida State fans or Georgia fans, sorry about that. Um, I have lived in Texas about uh, 40 years, so yeah, I guess I'm a native Texan by now. Um, I try not to let my... Um, uh, accent come out too bad so anyway and uh as far as backgrounds um i spent some time in the military i was an army medic i was a paramedic after that so i was in the medical field for a while um when i decided to get in the financial field with annuities it was actually a family business my mom and um well my stepmom and dad we started a business together we were helping seniors who um uh, senior centers as far as retirement um we closed the business down, I guess it's been about eight years ago. So I was starting back all over again. Um, I found a company called Appreciation, um, which helped me get into the market with teachers, their TRS 403Bs, which once again had a lot to do with the annuity side. Um, I found uh, Family First Life through a, another manager, which um, she was very nice and uh, showed me a lot of things that were going to work a lot better. Granted, they were not what I call the, the, their focus was most definitely not on annuities. So I figure I had a wonderful opportunity at Family First Life to kind of help push that side of it a little bit more instead of just the life insurance and show folks that, hey, you know, this is actually a very good other side to it, even though I call us sometimes the, uh, either the stepchildren or the black sheep, but you know, hey, it still works. And I know they have been doing a lot to start recognizing the annuity side, which including the Hall of Fame, because for folks that did not know, last year, I had to write $4 million in annuity business to make Hall of Fame because they didn't have annuity side. And that's the only way I could do it in life insurance. And I think I came up at 3.3 million. I was not a happy camper. So when they told me it was $2 million this year, I thought, well, that won't be a problem. And yeah, that, that alone made a big difference as far as, you know, getting people to understand that there is another side to this business that can be very lucrative. Um, and that's why I'm here to hopefully show some of y'all how this works. Okay, well, Steve, that's an amazing story. I had no idea, you know, it goes all the way back. And I think that that's kind of, there's a lot of beauty in that, right? Like when you grow up around that, you see it, you're exposed to it. I think it really, you know, probably has helped you over the years to just really see the importance kind of blatantly out there. So I love, love your story. Um, I also love that you hit Hall of Fame. I'm like, technically, Steve, you hit it last year, like one and a half times in, in my eyes, you know, but <laughs> Although that was not a category, excited to have you in there, you know, this year, you know, no doubt. And I remember looking at your numbers last year and being like, this just isn't fair. Like, this is a lot of annuity volume. So just really excited to see you up there this year. Now, just to kind of jump into the process, you know, you and I talked a little bit earlier um, and I told you, you know, one thing that I feel like, you know, the team can sometimes struggle with in terms of actually seeing the opportunity and I want to be clear, guys, when we're talking about SRS, Symbol Retirement Solutions today, we're talking particularly about annuities. We are not talking about IULs. So I just don't want that to get into the mix and get make it a messy call, um, as I know Steve's really structured on this. So I'm excited about it. Um, but 
how do you vet Steve? You know, like, how do you know that you're talking to the right person or the right um, crowd, so to say, when you are speaking with a potential prospect? Well, there's a few things you're going to have to look at when you're talking to folks. Um, you know, with just like life insurance, annuities do have suitability. Um, so there are certain minimals you have to meet. Uh, pretty much even talk to them or you're just, you're wasting time. Okay. What I tell folks is if they are trying to move $20,000 and that's all they have in their savings and they have nothing else, it's not going to go. Okay. They have to have so much liquid assets and then they have to have so much non-liquid assets. What I tell folks is if they're moving 50,000, they're going to need 25,000 liquid assets, at least half of what you're trying to transfer to annuity. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. Um, like I said, if not, you know, there, there, there's no annuity company that's going to take their only $10,000 out of their savings and leave them nothing as far as liquidity and, and let it be approved. It is just not going to happen. Okay. And I do apologize if a black thing comes running across the screen every once in a while. It is not a ghost. It is an assistant that I didn't get a chance to get put up. So anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, there are certain minimal requirements, but it's nothing like life insurance as far as, you know, having, you know, a long list of medications or, you know, have you had problems with health history? They're, they're not going to ask any of that. All they're going to want to know is what do you have as far as money wise? I mean, how much do you have in savings, checking? Do you have a 401k, 403b? Do you have a brokerage account? Uh, things like that. That's their suitability side of it. And like I tell folks, if you've got questions about suitability, they will literally tell you what it is in their forms when you're filling out the application. If not, just, you know, call me or anybody else and we can probably tell you really quick if it's going to fly or not. Absolutely. So that's huge. And I think, like you said, um, just realizing like, hey guys, like not every, it's not just one age bracket. It's not just, you know, one income bracket. It's, it's a broad spectrum, but you also have to make sure that you're looking out for suitability purposes. So that's the biggest thing almost to take it from life insurance. It's like you said, you don't have to qualify medically, but you need to qualify financially, right? Um, that's right. kind of how my brain is viewing it. Um, now, you had mentioned to me, um, and I know you do predominantly most of your business at this point via Zoom. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Probably about 90% of my business is being done through Zoom. Perfect. And Steve, what would you say, you know, the biggest thing um, you feel like you're able to build trust or what do you feel like builds trust with your clients, you know, being birth, like being virtually talking about, you know, potentially their life savings? Well, keep this in mind. OK, the, the folks that you will be talking to about your annuities are probably going to be mainly clients you've already talked to about life insurance. So you're already going to have a little bit of trust there right off the bat. OK, the main thing is to really gain their trust and understanding is to make sure they understand that you, you have a plan of action or you have something you want to show them to give this annuity a purpose. Okay. You know, you got to remember, you're not out there to sell them something. You're there to help protect them. Just like you do in life insurance, annuities are the same way. When I talk to somebody and I'm going through the program with them, I'm going to make sure they understand that, you know, I am going to show you where you're at, where you need to be, what recommendations I can make, and then show them why an annuity is very important and what it's going to play in the purpose of their retirement. Beautiful. And, you know, with that being said, guys, you know, Steve, you kind of touched on this earlier. You said, you know, hey, when after you write a life insurance policy, like, do you guys follow up? Like, do you call and review the policy? Do you call and make sure they got it, right? And I think, you know, for me, and if you guys, if we're not reaching out to our clients, like we should be, and I think Steve's going to kind of talk about, or he already did, how that can serve us, right? If they mm -hmm. trust us with their, you know, mortgage protection, their final expense, they get the policy in the mail, it is what we said it was going to be, and everything looks good, um, it kind of does open a door, right, Steve? Oh, yeah, most definitely. The only difference between what I do and y'all do is, when I talk to a client, I'm talking to a client about the TRS, which is the teacher retirement system. So it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, you know, when I'm talking to them, I'm explaining how the TRS works. I'm explaining how some security works with it. If they have a 403B, how the 403B works. And then I go into, you know, rest of as far as the retirement. 
the only difference is, see, y'all have already talked to those folks about the life insurance. So when you're going back, let's say, to deliver a policy or go over it with them, you've already got rapport with them. All you're going to do now is just take it to the next step. And with that, Steve, right, like that's simple, like, you know, I was, we were talking kind of about that financial inventory. So, you know, in each and every appointment, you know, I'll say, you know, Steve, you know, what do you have that acts like life insurance? You know, any 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, you know, significant savings, you know, what does that look like? And with us already having that information on the front end, Steve, it kind of allows us to set it up on the, on that return call, so to say, when they get the policy to be able to know if we do have an opportunity in front of us. Would that be fair to say? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I know you mentioned to me, I think that this was really cool. It was almost like when, when you know, um, I started in life insurance and somebody said to me, you know, there's two things you need to know. You have to know whole life and you have to know term. Whole life is permanent. Term is only there for a particular term of time. And on the phone with you earlier, Steve, you know, you said to me, the way I break it down is income and assets. Right. You know, what's the income or what's the income going to look like and, and what are the assets? So um, talk to us a little bit about that. OK. Pretty much annuity is going to do two things. It's either going to give you guaranteed income or it's going to give you growth. OK. And the one thing I can just kind of help you understand, because I, I know a lot of people talk about, you know, as far as annuities, you've got what we call an index annuity. Just think of it as your index universal life. What's the one thing that it does as far as cash value? I mean, if you had to explain to somebody, okay, your cash value is being grown by the indexing in the market by using these certain indexes. I mean, everybody knows how to do that with their IULs, correct? Right. If you take the life insurance portion out of that, you just explained an index annuity, okay? I mean, as far as simple terms. An annuity is nothing more than building that cash value using the indexing, it just doesn't have the life insurance portion. So, yeah. you know, how that works is, you know, with the cash value in your life insurance, of course, you've got the life insurance coming out and stuff like that. So it won't grow as fast as annuity because all annuity is there to do is to give you growth as far as that side. The other side the annuity works good for is what we call guaranteed income. Okay. Now, this is, and that we'll go into this a little bit here in a few minutes, how this all works. But when people ask, well, that's great, but what does that do? Well, when we talk about guarantee income, most people, most people will think about guarantee income as Social Security, right? I mean, everybody, every, everybody knows Social Security, you know, that's your guaranteed income for life. What people don't understand is when you have uh, programs like, if anybody's gone or ever seen railroad retirement before come up on Social Security, you may have had a few clients say, oh, I get railroad retirement. Well, guess what pays out railroad retirement? A guaranteed annuity as far as income. It's an income annuity that pays out railroad retirement. Um, TRS, which is who I work with, Teacher Retirement System for Texas and about 14 other states, that is all paid out by a income annuity. Um, almost any pension with any of your major corporations, um, if they are paying out a pension, it's being paid out by an income annuity. So the whole point is we can guarantee even more income using an income annuity. So that's the two things you need to understand. Income annuity, you either use it for, I mean, for annuity, you either use it for income or you can use it for growth. And I'm going to show you how you present that to somebody. Okay. Everybody, any questions so far? So far, oh. I think we're good. We're rolling. Well, nobody's not. Nobody's gone to sleep yet, so I'm doing okay. You're doing great. You're killing it. <laughs> okay. Um. So, if it's okay, uh, uh, Marissa, I, if we can get the whiteboard up. I'll kind of just show them a little bit about what I'm talking about. If we can try to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you um, should be able to share, Steve. You should be all set. Okay. Um, let me hit share screen. Let's see if it will bring me up. It may not. Um, okay. 
and take your time over there, Steve. Don't no worries. Um, but guys, I think it's like what what Steve's talking about right now. It's it's really valuable because it's like it's a license we already hold, but I think it's a product we all overthink. You know, um, so just kind of something to be mindful of. Um, but I'm excited for this. I've been I've been waiting for this since Steve and I talked earlier. So this should be good. Now let's see if this will work. I don't know. Let me set the whiteboard down and I might even let this work. And guys, what Steve's talking about right now, when you're POSing your clients, this is something that you should absolutely be talking to them about if they don't necessarily need more, you know, general life insurance coverage. So keep that in mind too. Like Rami just put a comment in the chat. Like imagine how much money we've all left on the table. Just call those clients, see where they're at. They may be in a total different spot um, and just talk to them about their retirement. For sure. And um, POS, Heather, um, I'm going to put it in the chat, but it's basically just- Sorry, guys. POS is just an annual review. That's just, yeah. What, yeah. It's from our practice company. Unfortunately, we, we carried that with us. Okay. Well, I was hoping I could get this to come up. It was working for a minute, Steve. You had it. <laughs> oh, did and I? it went away. Yeah. Well, it won't let me, it would not let me- um, right on it was the problem um okay yeah that was the only problem i ran into but let me see if i can pull it up on my zoom and i'm sorry i know this is wasting time I... that's okay take your time i know if you, you're able to pull that up that will be valuable but if not we'll, we'll talk through it so either way okay and guys as i was kind of you know just over time, right? We think about how much, you know, what did I leave on the table? What could I have done better? What could I have, wh whatever it is, right? Um, and guys, there's so many opportunities where I've asked that golden question, right? What do you have that acts like life insurance? Any 401ks, IRA? It's, it's not that I don't ask. I ask, by the way, but I don't follow up on it. And that's that's the problem. It's like, how much money have you left on the table? I know I've left a lot. I'm not, I'm not too proud to say it. But at the same time, it's like, there's no need. Let's try to put people in better situations. And, um, you know, earlier in talking to Steve, you know, he basically said, in other words, in, in Steve's words, it, but it much better than I'm about to put it, you know, it's important that people have life insurance. So when they die, their family's okay. But it's also important that they have enough income to adequately keep their life afloat while they're alive. Right. And I thought that was a really valid point right like we all have those concerns when we go it's just like living benefits like but what about when we're here right um what does that kind of look like so i think just keeping that in mind um is really important too okay i think i may have it but let me just make sure Whiteboard. all right let's see if this will come up okay uh can everybody see that yes sir Okay. Well, let's not do that way. That's this way. Okay. Everybody see that? As far yep. as written? Everybody good? Okay. So when you are coming back to talk to somebody about their life insurance, okay, you sold them, you're coming back, you're going over the policy, you sit down with them. And when you sit down with them, you know, I usually say, look, you got a few minutes. I kind of want to go over a little bit about your retirement just to see where you're at. To just see if there's anything else we can possibly make some recommendations for. And when I sit with them, whether it's a piece of paper or notepad or if you got a computer, doesn't matter. All I do is I write down two things. I put one side, I put income. The other side, I put assets. And the first thing I'm putting at, under assets is what you just sold them, life insurance, right? At some point, that's going to be an asset, okay? Now you got their attention. Next thing I put on there, okay, we know you're going to receive Social Security, correct? I mean, that's a yes or no. Yeah. I ask them if they're married, is your spouse going to receive Social Security? 
Okay. If they know what the Social Security is, that's great. I mean, have you looked at a statement lately or last four or five years? If you looked at one, do you remember what it had, you know, as far as what you're going to see? You know, let's say they say one says 2,000, spouse says I'm getting 1,700. Okay. And what I'm doing is just trying to get some ideas of what their retirement income is going to look like. Of course, you know, I ask them, do you have a pension? Um, do you know if they work in a school district or with the government, they may have a TRS or a TMRS or, you know, something else. Just find out what they know they're going to receive as far as guaranteed income. But to keep this simple right now, let's just say they're just getting Social Security, $3,700 a month. Okay. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to the life insurance side or the asset side. And I'm going to ask them, well, what assets do you have? They may say, oh, well, I've got a 401k. All right, great. Um, they may say, I have a IRA. Um, they may have um, just a brokerage account. They may have a savings. I mean, all you're trying to do is get some ideas of what they got. And a lot of this, if I remember right on your forms, you should have a lot of this information already as far as some of the stuff they have as far as assets, okay? So once Not we to interject, this... sorry, um, but really quick. So Heather asked a good question. Um, would property count as an asset in this scenario? No. Um, Not it. I mean, okay, let me read back. Let me re say that. If it's their homestead, if it's a property they, they're living in, yes, it's an asset, but since they're going to be living in it, it really, you really don't want to put it on here because you're probably not ever going to see money out of it unless you run into a situation that you have to do a reverse mortgage. And that's a whole nother <laughs> world to go down into. The That's usually the only time that, the only time you would put down an asset is if they have rental properties. And then it's considered income, okay? And a lot of times I'll put it under both income and assets because they need to understand how that's going to work. And once again, without going into a lot of tax situations with that, if they do have a rental property, just put it down as income. You can also put it down as assets, okay? Because it's kind of doing both. Perfect, got um, it, thanks. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this one as simple as possible in this particular case, but let's just say under their 401k, I don't know, they have 200,000 in it. Um, they have, you know, $10,000 in an IRA. Um, they don't have a brokerage account, but savings account, you know, let's say they have $60,000 sitting in a savings account, okay? So let me kind of explain 401ks and let me tell you the optimum client to have with a 401k. If you have a client over the age of 59 and a half and they have a 401k, you have the best situation for them as far as helping them out. And here's why. Please write this down. This is very important. Almost all 401ks have what they call an in-service distribution. What that in-service distribution means, once you reach age 59 and a half, you have the right to take the money of your 401k up to about 98% of it and move it somewhere else. It will not close the 401k. It will not change the 401k. If they're getting matching, they're still going to get their matching. Their money's still going into it. It just gives you an option to take that money out and move it somewhere else. Understand if you move that money, it has to go into another qualified plan, an IRA. If you don't, you are going to have some very upset folks. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So if you know any clients that you've seen that you've done life insurance and they happen to have a 401k and they're between and they're over 60 and they're still working, you need to pull those folks first. Okay, because here's what I'm going to show you that makes a difference. So we take this, these clients we're talking to now, 
And I'm going, okay, so you got $3,700 a month. Would you be comfortable living off of that when you retire? And no. that amount, most of them are going to tell me, yeah, it's probably barely going enough to pay my bills. Okay. So obviously we need to do something with your guaranteed income to make sure you're going to have this money guaranteed for the rest of your life that you know it will not disappear. So let's say if we went up to 4500 a month, would that be better? Okay. I try to get some idea of what they want to look at as far as what they're going to be comfortable. Now, obviously, we're going to stay a little realistic, but you know, even if we can get them to forty-five hundred or four thousand a month or forty-two hundred a month, try to get some ideas what would make them feel comfortable. Okay. Yeah, some of them say, "Well, I need ten thousand dollars a month." Well, once again, let's be a little realistic here. Okay. <laughs> So if I get them say, okay, well, yeah, if we could get closer to $4,200, $4,500 a month, that would give us some breathing room. So knowing that, next thing I'm going to ask them is, okay, so we know you need to get $4,500 a month. You've got a 401k sitting here with $200,000. We're talking about an additional $800 a month, which is almost $10,000 a year. Sure, we could take the two hundred thousand dollars, and you know, you could probably get through twenty years. But after twenty years, it's gone. Now, do you have children or grandchildren? If they said, "Well, yeah, we got kids and grandkids," well, have you ever thought about leaving them something? I mean, we know we're going to take care of you first, but if there's anything left, I'm sure you'd like to leave something with the kids and grandkids. Well, sure, okay. So if we're taking two hundred thousand dollars, and if we can get that to give you a guaranteed income for the rest of your life to get you to $4,500 a month? Wouldn't that sound a little bit better? Yes. Sure, it's going to sound pretty good. Well, what if I also told you that if both y'all pass, any money still left here, now it's going to go to your kids or grandkids? Even better. Now you got their attention. OK, making sure they understand any money that you're still putting in your 401k past that is still going to be there. So if you're going to work another five years, all that money you put in your 401k, that's still going to be there for your assets. Your IRA is still going to be there for your assets. Your savings are still going to be there for your assets if you need money for emergency or vacations or other things like that. We just want to make sure we're guaranteeing your income so you have enough to live like you want to, or at least live comfortably when you retire. And understand, this is just not going to you. This is also going to pass to your spouse. So no matter which one y'all pass first, the second one will still receive the income. And once both y'all are gone, money still left in that annuity will go to your beneficiaries. Awesome. Does that and make Steve, sense? It, make, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. Um, and see, what would you say, you know, through your experience, um, what would you say is something that maybe you, you've had to explain to folks, like how this makes sense, right? Sometimes people are like, how does the insurance company or how can, you know, people, or how can the insurance company say they're going to guarantee me, you know, $500 a month? Like, how would you answer back to that? Does that question okay. make sense? Oh, yeah. And yes, I get it all the time. <laughs> Well, how can you do that? That just doesn't sound like that can happen right. I mean, you know, I understand, yes, I understand that they get this. What I tell them is you got to understand that this is being done through a life insurance company, okay, that does annuities. Now, just to kind of help them understand that the reason companies can do this is because they have billions and billions of dollars. And they they are able to use that money to invest, to bring in enough to pay guaranteed incomes out. Remember, the same thing I'm talking to you about now is the same life insurance company that has guaranteed railroad retirement since 1920s or 30s, that guarantees pensions from major corporations, 
that you know will guarantee the Texas retire or teacher retirement system, which is 497,000 teachers in Texas alone. I think you're going to be okay, but just to kind of give you even more. Now, I don't know about other states, but I know for the state of Texas, any insurance company that does business in the state of Texas has what they call a Texas Assurance Guarantee. What that means is for any annuity up to $250,000 is guaranteed if that carrier goes under. It's, got, it's like the FDIC of insurance companies. And I'm sure other states have it. We can probably look and see, and I'm sure all of them have something. But I know for the state of Texas, we have that. That also covers life insurance too, folks, just for your information. Okay. So when they start asking about this, I tell them, I said, look, you know, I have more people say that they're more worried about Social Security going under than they are their life insurance or their annuity. At least it has guarantees. And yes, our Social Security is guaranteed when people ask me that because if Social Security went out of business, 89% of America would go out of business also because that's how many people depend on Social Security as far as retirement. So unless we're going to do an economic and political suicide, the Social Security is not going anywhere. It may not be as much, and they keep raising the rates or the ages. Most of us have to wait till we're 67. The younger ones are probably going to look at 68 or 69 before they get Social Security, but hey, it's going to be there. It's just when will you get it? Love it. And being able to just explain it that way, that you're not in like this fright, like, oh, and like, you're not all over the place, Steve. Like you just flat out said, like, it's, it's a life insurance company. This is how it works. Basically, this is what it is. This is what it does. Mm -hmm. And when I'm even just looking at this, I'm like, okay, like it all seems so simple, right? Um, because it makes sense, right? And sure. I, I think that that's the thing that a lot of us missed is like, Steve, this makes complete sense. Just like it makes complete sense that, you know, John Smith pays $90 a month and when he dies, his family gets 15,000, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we can just overcomplicate it. So I love how you're almost like short answered because it gives an explanation in a way that it's not this long winded explanation. It's just, this is what, this is what happens. This is why. So I appreciate the clarity too. Well, yeah. And like I said, all this is to do is just to get them to understand the basic concept. Okay. Obviously there's more to it than this, but when you're talking to them, all you want to do is be able to help them understand here's the situation you're in. Here's what you got on income. Here's what you got in assets. All I'm going to do is make some recommendations. That's what I tell everybody. I'm not here but to just help make some recommendations to try to make sure that you meet all your goals that you want to meet for retirement, okay? Give the annuity a purpose. That's just like your life insurance and everything else. The reason why people are going to keep the life insurance is because you gave it a purpose. The annuities are the same way. I give that annuity a purpose when I say that money and that income annuity is going to guarantee your income for life. So the last thing you want to do is touch it. Because you touch it, you just lost what we worked on. Okay? And just FYI, my, um, I know there's a word for it, um, surrender. Surrender rate for my annuities, uh, this year is zero. Last year, I had one annuity that they didn't surrender. Well, they surrendered. They cashed it in because he wanted to do something with the house. But it was 30000 He warned me ahead of time. Year before that, zero. I, if I have one annuity that somebody has either changed their minds or surrendered it on me, I'm upset for the year. Okay? So the difference also is when you're doing annuities, as far as them changing their mind or dropping it, if you do, if you set it up where they have that purpose, like income, or and we didn't even go on the growth side, we're just doing income, they're not going to touch it because they know that money's going to be there when they retire to make sure they have enough income guaranteed for life. Period. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's literally that simple. And the flip side to this is when they do get ready to retire, and they call you up and say, hey, Steve, we're ready to retire. How do we get this money started? And you start that income, and it starts coming to their account every single month. 
I still get calls from my clients that I started this three, four, five years ago. Steve, that money's still coming in. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know? And they are just so happy. And it's just, it's such a good feeling to know that you did this for them and that their retirement is going the way it's supposed to because of something that you helped them with by just taking a few minutes of their time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And oh, by the way, it does pay a pretty cotton picking good commission on top of it. So, you know. And Steve, quick question. Um, sure. real quick. In regards to the beginning, so any 401k after the age of 59 and a half at all, we can roll into any FIA, correct? Well, yes and no. Okay. Most of them, yes. There may be, okay, I can tell you, like, for, I don't know why. Toyota is the only company I've ran into so far that they will not let us do a in-service distribution. Matter of fact, they wouldn't even let us do the, um, turn it off. Anyway, um, they wouldn't even let us do the transfer when we had an opportunity back in COVID, which really surprised me because almost every company will let you move $100,000 in the COVID part if you needed it. Not Toyota. Toyota will also not let you do an in-service distribution, which is ridiculous. Most other companies, 98% of them will. And yes, you can move it to a uh, fixed index annuity as long as you understand we have to have it under an IRA. We got to keep it qualified. Okay. But yes, what we need to do, depending on what you're using it for, we need to make sure we get the right carrier though. So for example, a theme has a very good guaranteed income starting day one. If somebody needs it like they're retiring right now and yeah, I'd love to have an additional $1,200 a month, we could literally move it to a theme. I think it's a pro performance. I'll have to look it back up. But we can literally move it and within 30 days start paying them a guaranteed income for life. I've done that with quite a few clients that needed it, you know, like, hey, I, we're, we're retiring two months. What can we do? And we literally got it set up in two months. We started paying out an income. A thing does very good on that as far as guaranteed income. And then if you are looking for folks that may not, if they're not sure they need the income, but they possibly could later on, and that's a little more uh, planning with Social Security, then there's other programs like Fidelity has a very good Growth with an income rider, low fees. You know, I mean, there. Once again, everything, depending on what you're trying to do for your client, we have to be very specific on which carry we want to use to get the most out of it. Just like your old life insurance. I know every person, depending on their situation, will depend on who you're going to use as far as your carriers. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, you know, Steve. So. You talked a lot about the retirement side, which I think is really important. Now, what if, you know, maybe you bumped into somebody um, like myself and I said, Steve, I'd really love to have something like this, you know, in the future or, you know, or how are you having that conversation um, of growth, I guess we could say. Exactly. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples, even with just... Uh, you know, some of my regular clients I've talked to that they have actually sent me their kids that have come in and said, Steve, I love what you did with mom and dad. Is there something I can do? I don't have much money, but I'd like to start something. Okay. National Life Group, which is the company I use for my 403Bs, actually has a income, annu or not income, annu annuity that they can actually put money in it on a monthly basis. Okay. And they don't even have to start it with anything. So the reason for this is because when I talk to somebody under a 403B, which is what they offer teachers, I will get teachers that just started. They have no money yet. They're just now starting to get paid. So when they start to 403B, we may put down, oh, let's do $100 a month. And that's what we'll start going in on a regular basis. Now, I will tell you, you're, you're, you're not going to get rich off this, but the nice part about it, the way National Life Group works, is if you are setting these people up, you're getting paid at a commission for as long as they have that program and they're paying into it. So it, it just like your life insurance, it really does help give you some residual. Okay? 
but yeah, you can you can start somebody, you know, if they're brand new or they may only have a few thousand dollars and a little IRA. It's like I really like to add more to it. What can I do? Then yeah, we can set up on a monthly bank draft and it can come out automatically every month to go into that annuity. Now I understand National Life Group is the well, I think North American will do it, but National Life Group is gonna be your best bet as far as that program. Beautiful. And guys, anyone on this call, I actually have one of those on myself. Um, you know, great product, just thinking forward, you know, because we're all on here self-employed. It's like, you know, we want to make sure we're we're looking up for ourselves, just like we're looking up for our clients as well. Steve, yes. if someone is say like in their like 20s or 30s and they have a lump sum of money, like what product would you um, recommend them putting the money into for growth reasons? Like as far as an annuity goes, like, for example, say I want to put like $50,000 into an annuity, like what product would you recommend? Okay. Well, before I go on product, let me just kind of help clarify a few things here real quick. Okay. okay. Anytime you have young folks, all right, I'm talking 30 and under 35 and under. Okay. Be careful on what you are going to recommend when it comes to annuities, and here's why. An annuity is not like a brokerage account. You can't just take money in and out. If you put money into an annuity, whether it's non-qualified or an IRA, you have what's called a 59 and a half rule, which means if they take money out, unless it's under a hardship case, they're going to get hit with a 10% penalty. Right. So when I'm talking to somebody that is young and they say, oh, I've got $50,000 I like to put somewhere. Okay, well, my first question is, what are you planning to do with the 50,000? Are you know that that's going to be your retirement? And if it is, what do you have sitting in your savings and checking? Okay, if that's all they got, I ain't gonna recommend them putting $50,000 in annuity. I may recommend them putting 20, maybe 25, but not the whole amount. Because one, it's not going to get through suitability. <laughs> okay, I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But two, I'm not going to get per a person in a situation that they call me three years later. It's, oh, Steve, I'm thinking about getting a house. Can I take $15,000 out of my annuity? Yeah, but it's going to cost you $1,500 right off the bat, not including any other surrender penalties, you know, on top of it. No, I mean, I'm not. You don't want to get a person in that kind of situation. Okay, it's almost like trying to sell somebody life insurance using the last dime they have. Okay, you would not want to get somebody in that situation because you know it's not going to last long because the minute they need money, where's the first place that they go to? Okay? Right. Kind of the same scenario. Don't get somebody put in a situation where if they need money and the only place they can get it is from that annuity and they're young, it's it's not going to be pretty. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. And I'm sorry if some of my slang words are like, what did he say again? That's okay. Just you, <laughs> Heather probably is the only one who really understands me. <laughs> You're good. I'm like, actually, I'm like, we have a couple people on here from Texas. So, like, okay, well, all you Texas <laughs> folks, y'all, y'all understand what I'm talking about. So. <laughs> we, we hear you loud and clear. Um, and, and Steve, you know, let's just say, you know, there, there's an individual that's in that, that younger range, right. But maybe they have a hundred thousand that was, maybe it was an inheritance, right. But they, they work hard. Their income is, you know, you know, five grand a month, 10 grand a month. They have some other assets, some savings, like at that point, um, essentially, I guess my question is, is, is the only thing that we can offer from an annuity stance for that clientele something that would have to be drawn on at 59 and a half. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, unfortunately, that's just a rule with any annuity. Okay. Even if you look at short-term fixed annuities, which can be three or five years, unfortunately, once you're under that annuity contract, you have to keep it under annuity contract until you're 59 and a half. If not, then yeah, they will have the 10% uh, penalties on it, you know, unless once again, there's a hardship case. That's why when you go through anybody that is explaining life insurance or annuities and they tell you, okay, this is not a liquid device. Annuities is not, a, is not liquidity, okay? You need to make sure folks understand that. Don't tell them it's a savings account. Don't tell them it's a CD. Nothing like that. Or, yeah, you will not like the results, okay? 
annuities are long-term investments, period, okay? If they want something short-term and liquidity and they're young, that's what the market's for, okay? <laughs> I mean, okay. that's what I tell them, okay? That is what, you know, if you want something like that, you need to have the money either in a CD or in the market or something like that. And I got no problems telling young folks, you know, hey, if, you, if you've if you got money put in the market, you're young, do it. You know, I mean, that, I mean, you're there to recommend whether if for, you know, your benefit or not, doesn't matter. You make the recommendations that you see fit no matter what. And I have had a lot of clients. I told them, no, we don't need to do annuity. You got that much money. You need to either, you know, put it in the market and I can recommend, you know, a, a good broker or you need to keep it in a CD or something. I mean, you know, the CDs are coming up, so they're not bad. But, you know, if it's not going to fit them, then, you know, let them know. Well, here's some of the other things we can look at. Okay. And um, it, it's just, you got to remember, you're, you're, you're trying to make this person a client. Okay. And the best way to make a client and to keep a client is you always be upfront and truthful with them on everything you do. Okay, because if you do, I can tell you it pays off in the end. And I'll give you one quick story. It just happened to me, and I didn't even get a chance to give you all the numbers on it yet. I have one client out in Odessa. Well, actually, I got a few clients out there, but I have one client out of Odessa that had already done 200000 on their guaranteed income side. So we already had that, but he's got over $600,000 still sitting on a 401k, and we've been going back and forth. Now, these are good old folks. You know, they're not going to make any decisions anytime soon, I understand. So we, we've been going back and forth, back and forth. He called me yesterday, said, Steve, this is Barney. Um, these people from Fidelity just gave me a call and they said, and I'm, I've been telling about the market and they all, how up and down it's been and all that fun stuff for quite a while. He said, well, these people from Fidelity just called me and said, you know, with the market being the way it is, and all this money you have in this 401k, you really need to possibly look to move it to an annuity. And I said, really? I said, well, what kind of annuity are they talking about? He said, well, they were talking about a little three-year annuity at 5%. And da, 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 da. I said, well, I said, Barney, we've talked, but we never talked about any short-term annuities. You never saw any interest in it. He said, I really don't, but now it's starting to really make sense. And I guess I need to do something with this. He said, so can you come and get this $150,000 and put in that annuity you talked to me about, you know, last month when we, I said, you know what? I said, if that's what you want to do, I'll be glad to. He said, but I don't like to send that by mail. I said, Barney, you get the check. I'll drive to Odessa and pick it up. How about that? Now for you guys to know, Dallas to Odessa is about five hours. It's, it's worth the drive. Okay. <laughs> But the reason why they call is because the I already had a good relationship with them. I've already helped them on the income side. And even though they were kind of hesitant on doing anything else, as soon as somebody else called them, they didn't go with them. They called me and said, hey, these people called. Tell me what, you know. And it just helped push them make the decision for my side. So, you know, these are the kind of folks you will pick up when you start helping them more than just the life insurance. And I guarantee it will also make your life insurance side stick a lot more too. Because now when they have problems with their life insurance, they're going to call you up and say, hey, you know, we've been talking about the life insurance and you helped me with the, you know, income annuity. And I had this person call me the other day and said they can do better on the life insurance than what you can do. Well, you know, help me out here. You know, you know you, not only you got a chance to, you know, save your business, Probably you ask them about a few other things. I mean, you know, this this is what makes a difference as far as I know everybody's in is in, you know, sell, 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 sell. I gotta make my numbers, I gotta make my numbers. But I guarantee if you go back to your clients, I would not be surprised with the business that y'all do that every one of y'all couldn't write at least a million dollars plus annuity business by doing something as simple as what I showed you on the board. Even if you just did your one year you know, anniversary, are you just delivering policies or going over the policies if this be electronically delivered? And just FYI, million bucks, that's, I don't know, between fifty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 extra a year. I mean, I don't know if y'all could use that. I know most y'all are millionaires by now, so. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just keep in mind, it, it's, it is a very simple, doesn't take very long and, you know, 
And I will tell you right now, I'm doing the complete opposite, okay? I don't write much life insurance. And y'all all probably was sitting there going, why not, Steve? You got all these folks you talk to all the time. Why are you not selling more life insurance? And you're right. That is going to be my, um, that will be my next thing, goal for next year is I'm going to write a whole lot more than I wrote this year. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I I actually have some questions. I have two questions and it's probably sure, going to take us over. Um, but Steve, the first, I was actually going to touch on that with you. Did you just know annuities and you knew all the people and like, like, how did you, I know that how you're supposed to start just ask and ask and ask, but now, <clears throat> excuse me, now, how do you get your clients just by referrals or just since you don't write life insurance, how do you get your clients? Okay. So I get my clients a little bit different, but it's kind of the same way y'all do. Okay. Mine is just, I work strictly in the TRS market, which is the uh, teacher retirement system market. Okay. For the state of Texas. My clients, pretty much all we do is we send them out a little thing in the mail or email mainly to them just saying, hey, if you would like to have a review of your TRS, you can sign up, you know, and somebody will get in contact with you. You know, it comes up to my appointment. I call them up. I start a rapport with them. Hey, this is Steve. You see what's on my Zoom, I guess. You know, certified financial counselor. Got my NPN number. Got my CTIN number. Yeah, I do taxes. I have a tax office on top of it. So, you know, when I when I talk to them, all I'm doing is just going through, you know, their needs as far as how the TRS works, if they have Social Security, how that works with it, to give them an understanding that I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about, okay? And then we get into, okay, just like I got here, their income, their assets. Once we get that together into, you know, you know your guaranteed income is enough. So my leads are, yeah, they're a little bit different, but it's not much different than what y'all do. Because when you go out there and you're talking to them, and I know, Heather, you do Zoom sales, right? I don't. I'm just mostly on tele on the phone. But I, oh, um, yeah. Okay. If it is. Even with annuities, like a, okay. everybody, I just do not, I don't know. It's just, I'm comfortable on the phone. It's what okay, I do. Okay, well, the phone, you know, hey, <laughs> I've, trust me, I've, I've done some pretty good size annuities on the phone with people that don't have zoom okay right. it's it's the same thing when you're talking to them on the phone the reason why they are talking to you and giving you information is because there's already a little bit of rapport and trust there just by the way you are talking to them okay that you know what you're doing you're giving the information they need and once you've sold that policy well you know that tells you that well they're not buying it just because you know they want to, they're buying it because you have given them a reason for it. That same scenario, all you're doing is taking it to the next step. So when you call them and say, hey, Mr. Jones, did you receive your policy? You know, oh yeah, I did. Well, let's just kind of go over it real quick. You know, we saw that, you know, you've got your $50,000, it's running you $30 a month, yada, yada, yada. But while I got you on the phone, if you got a few minutes, I'd like to go over it with you a little bit about your retirement since we got this portion done let's take a look at a few other things you got about 10 or 15 minutes okay and since you don't have them on a zoom meeting we can do what i'm doing i'll tell them i say do you got a piece of paper and a pen do this for me on that piece of paper draw a line down the middle one side right income the other side right assets okay and then you can literally walk them down okay we know you're guaranteed income. You're going to receive Social Security. Have you started your Social Security yet? Well, no, I haven't. Okay, do you know how much you're going to receive when you reach your full retirement age? You know, there's your, if they're married, is your spouse going to receive Social Security? You know, I mean, the same thing I'm doing here. You're just doing it over the phone. Right, right. Okay. And, I mean, and once you walk them through it, even if you're writing it down, because, see, here's the thing I love about the whiteboard. When I'm done talking to somebody, I can say this is a PDF, and I send it to them. I'll put all my information down the corner. I have their names up top. That way, when we call the next time around, I'm going to say, well, you remember that PDF I said to you? Pull it up. Okay. Or I'll pull it up for them if they don't have it. So all we're doing is we're, we're working off of this to get to the final goal. I mean, it, it, is, it is almost literally that simple. And then my last question was, um, 
once you talk to them and people who have an, an idea of all the products available, because just like life insurance is a ton of different products, we know we're not supposed to study every product that there is. Right. We go to our upline or we go to, you know, people in our team to find out what to write, right? Or insurance toolkits or whatever. The SRS team, I'm assuming you never use SRS because you are SRS. So <laughs> I guess my yeah. question is, how would you recommend somebody who's never written annuity or only a couple of times for those specific questions, for those specific um, issues on how to recommend a product? Okay. Annuities, believe it or not, are almost a little more simpler than a life insurance. Okay. Now, granted, once again, I'm I'm not a big life insurance person, but you know, I, I have my few basic companies I use on life insurance, like you know, your your Mutual of Omaha, your Americo, um, National Life Group, some almost the Delta. So I mean, you know, and and I only use those because I know what they're specifically I can use them for. Okay. Annuities are the same way. If we know we're doing guaranteed income and they need it like you know, within a year, two years, five years, and it has to be guaranteed. There's only one company that's going to do that. Okay. So we already know it's going to be a theme. It's going to be their income annuity. All right. If we're looking for the best growth, just straight out, just growth. Okay. Then, yeah, we could look at fidelity. We could look at a theme. Now, they may say, well, yeah, but you know, I've got this money over in this brokerage account and they're charging me one to 2% fees. What is the annuity going to charge me? Well, if they're worried about fees, okay, well, Fidelity charges 0.1% for their performance pro compared to a theme charges 0.95 for their growth. So, you know, you, you, if you just study the two or three that's out there, a theme, Fidelity, and National Life Group are the big three that you should only, I hate to say only be worried about, but that would be the big three that you really need to concentrate on. Knowing a theme's always going to be your guaranteed income, period. National Life Group works great for people that are just trying to get something started where they can do a, a monthly income if they want to, or a monthly deduction if they want to, and starting with no money. National Life Group's the only company that's going to do that, okay? Um, Outside of fact of that, as far as, you know, bonuses and stuff, the only thing I can tell you is either if you're not sure, you know, obviously, you know, contact AMS or SRS or whatever initials they're going by. I know them as AMS. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, if not, contact me. Okay. I got no problems in helping folks with anything they may have. Okay. Because this is, this is what I do. This is what I love. You know, and Anytime, anytime we can help somebody, that's what I'm here for. Absolutely. And Steve, just to kind of piggyback off that question, Heather, I'm happy you brought that up. Um, I know for most of us on here, outside of a couple of us, we've never written an annuity before. Now, we know SRS is out there, and we love SRS, by the way. They give us a ton of support, amazing. Um, but in my personal opinion, I'm like, Steve, like we said, is basically um, just very well versed just as the SRS team is. Being that Steve is within the group guys, um, you know, I talked to Steve prior to this, so I'm not just putting Steve on the spot, just so you guys know. Um, as it pertains particularly to annuities, guys, if you have questions, I'm not gonna blast Steve's number onto this call. I'm not gonna share it in, in Slack, or I'm not gonna do that to Steve, okay? I'm just not, like, but- Honestly, Marissa, it's not a problem, okay? I mean, if, if you want to put, Phone number up there, you know, as long as I'm not getting calls at one or two o'clock in the morning, unless you're in jail, okay, then yeah, no, I don't want the phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> so, but with that, guys, what I, what I want to say is essentially, guys, Steve's on our team. He's here to help us. He teaches people how to do this process every day, which I think is really valuable too, right? To brag on Steve a little bit in that regard too. Steve is building a team that literally like they write annuities and they're duplicating truly what Steve's doing. So being that SRS, we're going to do that 50-50 comp split, if you will, on that first annuity where kind of they're doing all the heavy lifting, if you will. 
and we're kind of not blind, but we have just the basics in front of us. Um, Steve will help us out there. So it's like, you know, why go out if we can do it internally, right? Um, with that being said, though, you know, when you have a case or a potential case or a question, because I know coming off this call, and I love all of you guys, like, we could all come up with like 500 questions and, and send them to Steve. So I don't want to do that. But when we have a particular case, where it's like, hey, I actually have this, this scenario that I believe is going to turn into an annuity or could potentially turn into an annuity. Steve is open to being on that 50-50 split and helping and leading, guiding and directing you through that whole appointment um, and helping you and the client find that end goal, so to say. So at that point, we'd be happy to connect you with Steve. And then Steve and I were talking earlier, you know, once you're learning more, maybe on like, you know, the, the next two or three or whatever it may be, um, you know, lowering that where Steve's taking, you know, 20 instead of, instead of 50, right? Steve's here, you know, truly like to be able to help other people. And I think that that shines through just on the side that he focuses so much on annuity and what is it going to look like for, like, for you, like when you're here, right? How can we maximize, you know, like this just taught me so much in this past hour and 10 minutes that it, it, it's amazing. Um, but with that all being said, guys, my point is, is reach out to me, reach out to your upline. I'm sure eventually, you know, a lot of you guys will cross lines with Steve. I know Steve's going to be a convention, which I'm super excited about. But guys, let's utilize the people we have around us from the SRS team. But also it's like, if you have a case, reach out to your upline, ask the direct question, because I do know being new, sometimes we can jump the gun and we're like, you know, I have this client that has $5,000. And it's like, like Steve said, they need to be suitable. So we want to just make sure we're kind of passing through those, you know, um, filtering out for Steve, so to say, is kind of my point. Um, but with that all being said, um, Steve, I think you had a, added a ton of value. Actually, I know you added a ton of value. Um, I think that the for the, let's see, 14 people that showed up on this call, I truly believe that all, all of us guys, by the way, we're all going to start issuing more annuities. So thank you guys for showing up for yourselves. Um, and also just leaning in and, and connecting because at the end of the day, when we have somebody as good as Steve, He's top 10 annuity producer within the whole company. So like, and Steve, they said you're probably going to finish up like sixth or seventh, maybe. I'm like, trying to hit five, um, at least in the top five. But I think I've got to have 2.5, 2.6, and I'm going to be really, really close. <laughs> Amen. So guys, like we got, we have one of the, the top five annuity producers on our team. Like that's really, really, really valuable. Um, so I don't think Steve's here because he's like, oh, I want to take 50%. Steve didn't even know like that, like I was going to even bring that up. But my point is, guys, is if you have actual cases, reach out to your upline, reach out to me. We'll get you connected with Steve. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to watching everybody. Like Steve said, another thing I want to point out, he said he had 0% fall off rate this year. He had one surrender, you know, like before that. And then like 0% fall off there. Guys. We want to talk about chargebacks. It's like, it, I don't want to say they don't exist, but that they're very, very minimal, right? As as we can see from what Steve, you know, talked about to, to us today. So this is the type of income that it's like when that 20 grand hits the account, Steve, it feels different, right? Than when 1200 hits the account. Like they're both great, by the way. But my point is, it's like that larger sum can really up your business, truly, right? Um, So let's take full advantage of that. Um. Steve, one thing I did want to ask you before we kind of wrap the call, you know, what are your mm -hmm. goals wrapping up 2023 and going into 2024? Well, actually, so for 2023, like I said, I was just going to try to get within the top five as far as the group, as far as um, annuity side. Um, I've currently got four agents under me um, that I'm just trying to get their training finished up. One of them don't need training. She's doing great. The other three, I'm just trying to get the training finished up so they can go full time. 2024, I'm a, I'm gonna try to do three million in annuities. <laughs> Here's the one that's gonna be kind of funny for y'all. I'm gonna try to do fifty thousand dollars in life insurance, and I know most y'all do that within three months. But for me, that would be amazing if I could get that done. And then I would like to see myself and at least my four new agents. I like to see all five of us in the Hall of Fame for next year for end of 2024. So that's why I'm pushing them all four. 
Awesome. I love it. And Steve, no doubt in my mind, you know, it's funny earlier this morning, Christina walked in, she was like, yeah. Um, I think they said like, Steve's like going to like finish number six or seven. I said, why not top five? So I love how you said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that top five. Love that. I love how you're building your team. You're growing. And also like being able to get on this call and say like, Hey guys, this is how everything about fixed index annuities, but then also being able to say like, Hey, I want to issue up 50 grand a life business next year. Guys, it shows there's both, there's two sides to the coin, right, Steve? Like you're really gifted on the annuity side. You've worked really hard for that, by the way. But also guys, it's like, it's the same thing. It's a transfer of skill sets, right? So guys, it's just, it's really humbled me um, just to be able to talk to you today, Steve. It's been awesome. It's been great. No doubt you and your group are going to crush those goals in 2024 as well. I'm really excited for each and every one of you. And I truly appreciate you carving up the time to be on with us today. Well, just remember that for the convention, y'all come into my neighborhood. So we'll most definitely have fun to, when y'all come out here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm super excited for it. I might actually reach out to you for recommendations um, for a little team meet and greet. Um, so I might reach out to you on that later if you have some ideas around there. Um, that would be helpful. Um, guys, another thing I do just want to kind of drop out there that I didn't mean to just kind of put on the end of the call, but I know last year, the year before, if you were with us, we did like a meet and greet and an award ceremony. Um, we are going to be doing something similar this year. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be the first day on Wednesday. Um, we are going to have everybody RSVP for it just to make sure, you know, you're there, you, you know, you're gonna, you know, your flight's not landing at, you know, nine o'clock, et cetera, et cetera. If it doesn't make sense for Wednesday, we will push it over to Thursday. And the award ceremony this year, if you haven't heard already, it's not going to be on Saturday. It's actually going to be on Friday. And guys, those of you who hit Hall of Fame, um, you know, you want to wear your coat that you're going to, your jacket you're going to get, wear it on Saturday. From what I heard, the annuity jacket, which I think is pretty cool, Steve, is going to be a lot different then the life jacket, et cetera. So there's going to be a couple different jackets going on, which is awesome. And then being able to get yourself in front of those people. So um, I know that that was kind of a lot. I just kind of, you know, went on a, a tangent there. But guys, essentially, um, we're going to do a, a meet and greet and award ceremony. We're going to have the RSVP for it. We're going to be in Steve's neighborhood. So we're going to be in a good place. And um, we'll go from there. But um, I can't, tell you guys how much I appreciate all of you guys. Steve, again, thank you for pouring into us today. And again, we're going into week two of four of December. And guys, just to reiterate, the Family First Life year ends on December 27th. We want to have everything issued and paid. I don't want anybody disappointed on um, not getting their numbers due to the year ending on the 27th in terms of Family First Life. <music>